if y'all have not seen Tell me if y'all have not seen a cuter baby in your entire life. All right, we got the baby all cleaned up. Let me help mom along a little bit. And uh, it is a male. Shh, hush it up. Hush it. Y'all need to hush it up. Shut all of your little pie holes. We don't want to scare mama. Annie needs some time to recoup after all of that ordeal. But uh, you don't want to intervene if you don't have to. And so Annie's allowing all of us to come around and be a part of the moment, as long as we don't get too close. These geese are not helping anything, though. Uh, hey folks, Lester and Jamie here. Jamie's not quite here yet, but she will be momentarily. I can promise you that. Uh, I'm sitting here fighting the kitty cat away from the computer because she is old enough now to jump up onto the top of the counter. And here comes Jamie now. Hey, sweetie, come on. We're live and we've just gotten started. Welcome. Hello. We have a really, it was, first of all, it's nice to see everybody. Uh, we got both Facebook and YouTuber here, and I hope you enjoyed that new little intro. Uh, you all know that we had to change our intro around a little bit. The one that I used to like to use, all of a sudden, Jamie got all these emails from Facebook. It was like 100 emails, and it was all saying the same thing. Your video has been demonetized because, and then each and every email said the exact same thing and it was always because of that little intro or the outro that we would use and i guess it was deemed abusive to animals yep that i had to defend my life from carl yeah, that was a snippet where we showed... Which is an AI thing. It's not a human going Oh, it's that. not a human yeah. thing. No, it's an AI, and it, I guess, deemed that the fact that I had to wrestle Carl off of me, and I just so happened to capture it on video, was abusive. So it was deemed to go against community guidelines or community standards, whatever they called it. And so, yeah, so we had to say, okay... And so now we have to find a different intro or an outro. And so we're looking. So today what I use, you weren't here, but I use a little clip of the day that that little, the new alpaca was born. By the way, I think we're getting real close to getting a name. Now I'll let her handle that because I've learned the hard way that y'all want me just to kind of stop always interjecting. As a matter of fact, you've not said a word this whole live. I'm I just... have said plenty right here. I don't need <laughs> I don't need words or sound to say what I'm thinking. It's fine. Go ahead. Let me have a drink while you say something to hush up all the pee pass you're saying. Let her talk, Lester. Let her talk. Did y'all see the baby? Because I am madly in love with the new alpaca. Like, can't get enough. And today I got to be able to put my actual hands on him. Well, I did yesterday too. But yet today, Lester got to see me put my hands on him. And Lester, <sighs> Lester did not get to have that moment. Um, oh, I videoed that. That yeah. was on the live. That yeah. was on our live. Um, yeah. And then we, yesterday I talked about some name possibilities. And I put a poll up on Facebook on Suits to Boots and on I'm a Survivor. So... Some people are going to be mad, I think, because they're going to be like, wait, the poll said, but it's on two different places and it's two different polls. And so. believe it or not, not everybody. This is crazy to me. This is just crazy to me. I'm just going to say because it it's absolutely crazy. But I'm a survivor is the mothership. Let's just picture it like Independence Day. You have this mothership. And then all these little spaceships came out of the mothership. And so I'm a survivor sanctuary. It is, and it has always been the mothership of them all. And all of the other channels are branches of the mothership. You get the analogy. I do. You get the analogy. But there are some people that have branched off that are no longer a part of the mothership, which is fine. Find your happy place. We always say it. But you can't be upset if the branches... 
I don't know why I keep wanting to say Branch Davidians. I don't know why. I've almost said it twice already. I don't mean the Branch Davidians, whatever the heck that is. Isn't that that cult from Waco? Whatever. The branches, the branches are just the branches. They're not the tree. <laughs> so the tree has to take precedent, y'all. The tree takes precedent. I don't know why I'm even saying that. But what did the what did the branch say, and what did the tree project and you say? You just took us like seven different analogies down the road. I'll um, hush. I'll hush up again. Now all I'll I was gonna <laughs> say is I put out a poll, and it actually shows me numbers, so I can I can I can merge, and then I can I can look. And so let's back up. So the reason that we put out a poll is because everybody had all of these names. I'm trying so hard to make eye expressions the way you do. And my eyes don't say what you, my eyes say that I'm crazy. I'm going, I'm trying to do what you do while you're talking, except the re reverse. And all I'm doing is like making myself look like an idiot. So I can't win for anything. I. <sighs> so we have. <laughs> Go ahead. I promise I'll stop. We have Annie, Ernie. And indie, which means we have A, A e, e, I, which for us, we want to keep going with we're just, O. We're just silly. We're just silly like that. Two syllables and it had to end in an E, like an E sound. So that sort of limited the possibilities of names. And on my live on Saturday morning, I took a poll of everything that was on there and then condensed it down to three names. And then I forgot she forgot about me she forgot the the one guy who you hope would matter a little bit and when she and i were talking on the phone i gave her a suggestion of a name and she completely let it, let it she just it completely ignored it's what she did you that is not it. you ignored it what, what happened <laughs> is that i got in the zone of reading and first let me say so many people wanted ollie and ollie was an option until I realized we already had an Oli Ollie. Yeah. It's not that I didn't realize it. It's just that like Ollie sounds different than Oli, but Oli is who we had. And to to let Oli have Oli, it would not make sense to add an Ollie because they're spelled the same way and the vet records are the same. Like all they're just reasons, right? Yeah. So we decided to remove Ollie or Oli from uh, can, I have to the interject list. here. So we named her ollie when we thought it was a girl but to me when we found out it was a boy ollie sounded to me like a girl's name i don't know why jamie said it's not but i thought it did so i changed it to Oli. that sounded more the mass pig. huh the pig the pig this is yeah. the pig this was the pig so we've already had an ollie slash Oli who got snake bit in the face this is a while back and passed away from the neurological effects of the snake bite. So we thought it would be unfair to Oli slash Ollie, who, like Jamie said, already has vet records and already has a stone in our cemetery, our, 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 our pet cemetery. That sounds scary for some How reason. How about our memorial garden? <laughs> Why did I say our pet cemetery? I don't I'm, know, you weirdo. I, now I'm scaring myself. But we already have an Oli and Ollie. And so it's not fair, y'all. It's not fair to Oli or Ollie to have another baby with that same name. So we had to discount and 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 just kind of push that one out because of personal reasons. All right, go ahead, love. So that brought us to Oakley and Ozzy and Opie. And then that extra one that I just forgot to put on the poll. Which was Oki, as in Okie dokie. You're going to turn off the computer. <sighs> so my poll started with three and I added the fourth later, which made it all confusing and everybody's going to argue. And I'm a survivor poll had Oki on it, Oakley, Ozzy, and Opie. And can I say the final? Can, can we do this? I don't think you should say it. I think you should get your phone out and open your phone and literally show everybody. You could show them the. No, you're going to do that in this part of the live. If you do it now, they're all going to leave. Everyone's going to turn off and leave. 
and we're gonna have no one watching us. No one's gonna, no, they're gonna be mad and no one's gonna watch us. And they're probably gonna start being mean to me because it's always my fault. It's always my fault. Everything is always my fault. I'm doing it. And so, listen, so the polls don't, well, the polls can lie. Polls can lie. Can y'all see that? So, hold on, turn it at an angle. Because, let me turn this light off just for a second. They can see it. They can, I can see, see that? that? Yeah. Okay. So and you see how the blue shade on Okie Dokie is over halfway across right there. So from, from how I'm looking at it, it looks like the first one, Okie, has the most votes. Opie had the least. So you show, just go ahead and show that. So Okie has 9,138 votes. That was for Okie. Now, Opie, show, show Opie, so they can just count. Opie has 3,032 votes. Ozzy, which I liked Ozzy. Ozzy has 5,597. That's quite a bit of votes. That's a lot and of voting. And Oakley has 4,390. 4,390. So I would say Oki then won by a landslide. And Oki. can I just say, you can I've say, been practicing. <clears throat> okay, so I've been practicing, you know, talking to the baby bef before, and you're going to laugh. I made three videos yesterday because I was going to just go off of the comments and count, and the comments just kept flying, and I, so I made three different videos calling him different names, and yesterday I really thought it was going to be, well, first I thought it was going to be Oakley, then I thought it was going to be Ozzy by the, the counts in the comments, and then when I learned how to do a poll, today... I've been calling him Okie Dokie. Okie. <laughs> oh, I'm like, Okie Dokie, Smokey. And come on, Okie Dokie. And like, so I've been practicing all afternoon about Okie Dokie. And I, I'm kind of in love. It's just like, you have Indian Okie. You have, you know, like as, as two little siblings. And I just think I can call him an Okie from Muskogee if I want to. I can, there, there's just a lot of cute little things that uh that we're gonna go with and i don't know anyone else in the social media world who has an alpaca named Oki. what no i don't i can't think of anybody either and i think that Oki is really cute and it's unusual it's very different and uh and i love it and ultimately you all will learn to love it too so Listen, it, and, it, and we it's it's a democratic society we live in. And you saw for yourself, the poll numbers were not. You, this is this is not a regular poll. This is a real poll. And the, the numbers it did don't it for lie. Us. I didn't have to go to the comments and count like I did yesterday. But we didn't have to count the shads or the hanging, the hanging sh chads. What do they call those things? I don't know. We didn't do the little hanging chads. Sorry, Florida. We don't sit there and count the hanging shads. They call them shads, right? What were those things called? I have no idea what you're talking you're about. You're too young to know about this. There was an election one year that was a very close election. And the polls, or not the polls, but the election results were so close that they had to go, I think, into Florida. And they it were. Says, people say chads. Chads? I don't think it's pronounced chads. Yeah, it's a shemales type chads. I don't know, but the bottom line is they were thinking. This this is not me thinking, but supposedly maybe some of the older folks in Florida didn't really punch the holes hard enough. So you had little hanging pieces of little pieces, and they had to go back and take all them ballots and count each and every one of them by hand to see if it really were an actual hole punch. It was the most ridiculous thing ever. So people are saying, yes, they're called chads or chads, not chads. It can't be chads. It has to be shads. I don't know, but I'm so sorry. We don't have hanging shads. It was all done electronically, and I did not vote more than once. I promise. It only it does, lets you vote once. It only lets you vote once. So this, do, you, do people, I know you talked about some of your okie dokie story in your life, and this is why I think it's really neat and significant and has meaning. It's not just a goofy little name. I think that it became an option because of the history of okie dokie for you and the meaning and and the way it changed your trajectory of life you want to talk about that at all well i'm just so happy that i didn't just make that up you can see that people know what i'm talking about i do 
And I and I really wasn't sure how you said that, pronounced it, but it was. It was the Al Gore, and I believe it was one of the bushes, one of the, the first bush. If I'm not mistaken, can you see that? They're going so fast. And it was Florida. So I had a lot of my I had a lot of things right in that. I just don't know if it was pronounced Chads or Shads. But everyone's saying C H A D, which sounds like Chad. But I don't know if those things are called Chads or not. It was a 2000 election. Am I that old? How can I remember something from freaking 23 years ago, Jamie? I graduated high school then. Oh, my. No wonder you didn't. It was the second Bush. <laughs> that sounds so funny to me. I don't know why. That can't be the second Bush. That couldn't have been. That couldn't have been the second Bush. That had to have been the first Bush. Was that 2000? Was the second Bush? Then when was the first Bush? In 1980-something? I think 90. Oh, my God, Jamie. How old am I? <sighs> Anywho, bottom line is, I don't even know why we're talking about that. Uh, 1994. And I remember, sort of, I re sort of remember that. Uh, Anywho, so listen. We said from the get-go that we would let the internet decide the name of this baby. We just had to go by a certain number of rules. And the rules were it had to start with an O and end with the sound of E. So like Annie, Ernie, N-D-A-E-I-O. So something with the O and the ending sound of the E. There were a lot of suggestions but we narrowed it down to what we were seeing the most, the most of. It wasn't until we did the official poll or the more official poll on the Mothership channel when we got those kind of results. And so the results are in, my friends. And I'm so sorry if it's not how you voted, but uh, it was a... Uh, Somebody said we could have named it Oopsie. Oopsie. <laughs> oopsie. It could have been Oopsie. It could have been, it could have been oopsie. oopsie, but that wasn't one of the suggestions. That's the first time I'm actually seeing that. Me too. Because that probably would have been one of the choices. Oopsie. Now, here's going to be the fun one. And I think that Jamie said this yesterday. The next baby has to be with the, the letter U. Which leaves us with, like, the word of undie. Like, what There's else? There's not many. So you can't say like Ursula because that's a. Uh, it has to be a U with an I or E. I'm sorry, with the sound of E. U. So Ubi, which is nothing. Uh, undi. Undi. I'm trying to go A. Uli. Uli. Ubi. Uki. Udi. I just go A B C D. So I always put a U. Then I go through every letter. Ufi. Uki. Ugi. <laughs> Oogie, 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 G H U G I H I J U G K U G I L U G I. So you get where I'm going here. So you get Unky. 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 <laughs> Unky. Unky. So this is funny to me. I don't know why. And uh, hey, it's just some fun that we're having. Uzi. Uzi. Ukulele. Wait, Uzi. Oh my God, we're not naming it up. I got Uzi. Would probably get our every video would be banned because it would yes. have the word Uzi in there. And there's like, oh no, they're talking about something that they should not be talking about on a family channel. So I don't know about Uzi. Ugly. Ugly. <laughs> you know, Miss Pat's fish's name is Big Ugly. Ugly like, is so funny. Call it Yuri. I think Yuri is the old, is like. We don't, we, we are so far away from that. We are so far away from that day. So we have no need to even go there now. Did you post that video of Ernie today, by the way? Uh, okay, so I'm already in a lot of trouble. You do know that. I am in so much trouble with friends on the internet. I'm glad that we're family. So you can be mad at me, but you still have to love me. Because that's what family is. Family or those who can be so mad at you and just hate your guts, but because you're family, you're still, I still love you, but I just don't like you very much. So I'm so glad that y'all still love me, even though you don't really like me so much. I got in trouble yesterday, and I'm going to be in big trouble again today. Two days in a row, Jamie, I've really upset some people. Should I just play that video? Go ahead. 
Should I just play it? Now, should I play the one that I built or the one, the original? The original. The original. I'm playing the original. Y'all give me a moment while Jamie talks to you a little bit about this video. So the thing is, and I, I'm going to also check course, my fantasy score real fast while I'm here. I'm kidding. So, of course, today I made a video. Uh, I was doing some horse shuffling, and that means that Indy is going to make her way out. And Indy doesn't understand the stall etiquette. So Indy just makes her way out to the courtyard. Well... During that fiasco, that lit Ernie's life on fire inside the little's pasture. And Ernie did things that no one expected at all. But Indy was Indy was not touched. She was inside the courtyard. All was fine. And um, let's just say somebody else took the brunt of the, the moment. I'll just go with that. Ernie, no one's impressed, Ernest. I'm a Jane. I love the way you stand your ground, but that's really not what we mean. I was looking at her shoulder like, what in the hell is he doing? Justin, you're only meaning the donkey poodle. Donkey poodle is correct. Thank you. It looks like a man in a costume, Jamie. He's like a man in one of those double-sided costumes. Ernest, there's First nothing all, funny never about that. Before, ever. And y'all, he's not making contact. I want you to notice there's no contact being made. Well, his hands are on her hips. He was his hands are on her hips for sure, yeah, but, but there's no other contact being made. This is just him being cute and funny. Ernie, no Ernie. one's laughing at you. So my favorite song was, and I'm so sorry, but I don't mean it the way you think I mean it, but it's called Back That Ass Up. Ass as in donkey, obviously. Back that ass up. Uh, you a real fine woman wants you back that ass up. And so that's the song that I played on my little short or my reel. And I thought it was hilarious and Facebook allow it. No one, no one got all crazy about it except for the people in the comments. If Facebook thought it was hilarious, <laughs> the people in the comments did not, Jamie. So let me tell you the positive, the silver lining in all of this for me. Should I take this down? I think that it? we should leave that down. Yeah. Did you take it? Take it down with, for a minute? Yes. All right. So the positive... <laughs> That I'm going to call positive here is that Indy walking out like that and Ernie's reaction means Indy is not pregnant. So that little mishap of them being in the pasture together well, together a while back where we thought, oh, no, it's, we wasn't supposed to, we were supposed to be good till January. And Ernie was like playing baseball we'll just call it and well it wasn't so hold on it wasn't actually playing baseball but animals are also like humans in the fact that you sometimes go through motions that's what I, that's you, what i meant playing, oh okay playing. Playing. i didn't mean like getting and so they're they don't have the same rules and regulations and the same you know things that humans have so we have to manage that ourselves and sometimes it's not always that easy. And sometimes things will slip up and catch up on you before you realize it. So, yeah. So what Jamie's saying is Indy is fine. She's so Indy is, it, what, what I'm saying is that it was very obvious that Indy, what, like Ernie wouldn't have those feelings. I don't know how else to say that. If Indy was pregnant. So that means that Indy is still good and unscathed. I'm Jean took one for the team. Ernie left disappointed and all is well. So talking about the future of, um, oh my gosh. Uh-oh. SpaghettiOs. No, no. What's the darn that baby's name? I'm already, no. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. Talking about the future of Oh my God, we can call one uh-oh. No, we can't. It's not an E. Never mind. Carry on. Oh, oh, e. no, you no. can't. Uh oh, <laughs> that's like oopsie. Um, no, so talking about the future of, I want to keep saying, uh oh, spaghettio, but of okie dokie, okie dokie, okie will end up being pastured with Andy, but he will have to be neutered yeah. or, or he cannot stay intact, correct, and then. I, I think, I don't know how you feel about this, but Annie is yours as far as animals go. So maybe we should go ahead at the same time, get Ernie and and his 
his little guy done on the same visit. And uh, we can have the vet come to us and do that in the stalls. Yeah. And so we don't have to take them in and put them through all that extra stress. They'll be right there. They can do it together. If you remember, we had Donkey Dan done there at the sanctuary. We had Ringo, Ringo was done at the sanctuary. We've had several procedures done at before the sanctuary. We ever, before we ever had concrete floors or a barn or anything. Yeah. Like it was it was way more so, yeah, we're, rugged. We're a whole lot better set up today to have those things done. But, you know, we wanted some babies uh, from the alpacas. We want to experience baby alpacas. And They're I think amazing it's, protectors. Oh, my gosh. And, yes. and I say this in a video that I made that has not come out yet. But I feel like Annie is a, I don't want to say a different breed of alpaca, but a whole other level of intensity of protector. Well, you know why? You do know her history. And I do. So I'll talk on that real fast. I won't take up too much of your time because most of you guys already know the story. But you know that Annie was our first alpaca rescue, and we had to go catch her from a deer ranch, a deer farm. What I mean by that is, if, if you don't know about this, there are these very large acreages that bring in or they buy deer. And what they do is they, during hunting season, they allow you to come onto the property and hunt those deer. And so Annie's parents were actually the protectors of the deer herd. Uh, you already know alpaca is very protective and they will, in fact, help protect whoever they're herded with. And so Annie's mom was one of the grand protectors of the deer farm, the deer uh, from predators. But Annie was born there. She was born into the wild of a deer farm, never handled, never. So whenever the fella was no longer going to renew his lease and continue his deer ranching or farming operations, he loaded up all of his deer and Annie's mom. He could not catch Annie. Now, she wasn't named Annie at the time. That all happened later. She was just a wild alpaca yearling who'd been out there for a year running with the deer. And so we were given the, if you want her, you can have her if you can catch her. Now, this is long before we were making videos. We were still just people who were trying to recoup from a hurricane flood. But uh, we were looking for, you know, not so much getting into the rescues, but I was looking for a very unique birthday gift to give to Jamie on the first birthday that she and I would celebrate together, her first birthday. And so I took it upon myself to go trap her. And we did that and uh, brought her home. We called her first Raggedy Ann because she was so matted. Her, her fiber was so matted. It was so thick and so matted. She had never been groomed. And so I was calling her Raggedy Ann, just Raggedy Ann doll, because she was so such a mess. And uh, that's how Annie came to be. So the fact that she's calmed down as much as she has is a huge testament to the love that she's surrounded by and the trust that she gets from all of us. But uh, none of none. Annie is not like any alpaca that you're going to see on any farm channel because most alpacas are quite a bit more gentle because they're, they were not raised around deer yeah, I think in the Annie wild has the most keen sense of uh, awareness and, and surroundings and the, her hypersensitivity to things just doesn't allow her to be affectionate or handled. And, and that's just not who she is. And that's not who her babies are. Um, Indy has come a long way from, from Annie's, <laughs> Annie's care and she'll let us, she'll, she'll come up to us and touch us, but you can't still can't go up and love her and like full on, like, like a dog, you know, it has to be on her terms. And, and even Ernie, the same way, like Ernie will let you do it to an extent, but he doesn't enjoy that touch. You kind of have to sneak one in. You see who's trying to be a part of our life. <laughs> Listen. I can't even sleep on this couch anymore. No, it's hers. No, this it's her couch. She and she does, she does not let me sleep. Y'all know that I, I Look like at her little face. What's your so I, I I do go to the bed, but I have some kind of a weird problem in that if I go to bed 
I can't fall asleep. I lay in bed and I cannot sleep. So I can fall asleep if I'm watching TV. And so I don't want to bother Jamie with the TV in the bedroom. So instead, I watch TV here on the couch until I doze off. And then once I doze off, I'll normally wake up an hour or two later and go to the bed where I fall right asleep. Problem is now I can't even sleep on the couch because even though I'm drowsy and I'm dozing, she does not let me sleep. She wants the couch for herself. The thing she does, she's not bothering him to get attention. She wants the couch for her, like the whole couch. She wants him off. I'm so glad I'm not the only one. There's a lot of people saying that they can also not fall asleep in quiet. They need to have the TV on. I wonder what makes people that way. I don't know. I can I I can fall asleep pretty much anywhere. <laughs> like when it's time for me to sit still, I'm done. I don't I don't think I've ever had a hard time falling asleep. I wish I didn't. I hate that I can't sleep right, but uh, I can't. But uh, the TV helps me to at least fall asleep. And that's still not till midnight every night or so. Jamie has to go to bed earlier because she has to wake up early. But um, my normal wake up time is between 7.30 and 8. Naturally, I'll get up earlier if I need to. Obviously, on Lex morning, school mornings, I have to. But um, no, that's just kind of where, where we've kind of fallen. But no, she has really messed up my nighttime routine. Baby, I love you, but she's really messing with me bad. Oh, poor Mabel. She does love me, though. But, uh, boy, she likes that couch, too. And she doesn't like it when I take up all of it. Nope, not a fan. I've tried to share with her, but she <laughs> didn't want to share. She wants it to herself. She wants the pillows. She wants the blanket. And she wants me gone. So. Look at her eyes. She's so in like engrossed in this live right now. Something else that you guys are not... Uh, aware of that is just one of the neatest things about our inside pets is the routine that Christmas goes through every night starting at about nine o'clock, nine thirty. We normally have we have a pretty consistent routine. And after we get all finished up with the chores, we both have our bath or showers, we will normally find ourselves on the couch here watching the news or watching some kind of, if we have a movie, uh, Netflix or a Hulu that we're watching, we'll watch our show. And Jamie will normally at around 10 start heading to bed. And uh, 10 on weeknights, 11 on weekends. Yes. But, but, but the problem is right at 10 o'clock, no matter what, no matter what's going on with our movie or our show, Christmas starts going crazy. She comes and she begins to push Jamie and pushes her. She wants her off the couch. She wants her to go to the bedroom. She knows that that's my routine. And if I'm a minute late, she is like, no, 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 no. There'll be no, this is, it doesn't matter. If I try to, like, let's say we were busy and it's 9.50-ish and I'm going to just sit down for the first time. She doesn't even, she's like, no, no, it's not worth it. Don't sit down. She'll sit down in my spot. She'll get up underneath me. She'll annoy us to the point oh, that I'm she'll like, forget push it. And push and shove and she'll start barking. And she makes it to where Jamie cannot relax. She will not let her relax. And you hate to like shush her up and put her outside for, she's just trying to keep the routine in place. Yes. And part of that routine, she feels like she has to remind Jamie that, hey, it's your bedtime. Let's go. Come on. Off the bed you go. It's like you're a teenager. Somebody says, wait till the time change. Oh, no. Wait, will that be at 8 o'clock now? Or 9 o'clock? She fall back. So, yeah, it'll be like 9 o'clock, and she'll be like. Come on, let's go. She'll be like, let's go to bed. bed. I'm like, oh, no. Tired. Tired. Like, I, I have to, like, look at her and go, we're not going to bed yet. Like. I feel sorry for her because she wants to be that person. She needs to she be. That's keeps, her purpose. She keeps order in things. Yeah. Like, very much so of. You know, she keeps ordering the timeliness of things and, and like she does the health checks on everybody. Mm -hmm. Stella is like our mafia boss dog of like everybody's going to stay in check. Everybody's going to keep their behavior in their space and nobody's going to step out of line. And if you start to step out of line, I'm going to get right in front of you and I don't care how big you are. And like it's amazing to me, like each of their roles and what they do. You want to talk about what Sadie did today? No. Well, I mean, Sadie is, is very unique in so many different ways. But I, I think that I've already made a point about this on every darn video that Sadie is the best. Sadie and Fiona. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. If there could only be two, 
you can't say there could only be one because there's no way it could only be one. If there could only be two, as far as the best dogs, and I, I don't, I don't mean, I know it's cute what Christmas does, and I know that Trixie's just so darn cute with her bad habits, and you know Millie is just a cute little internet emoji type dog, and uh, yeah, they all have very unique things about them. But all I'm saying is the best two dogs that we have that do the most for the protection of the babies and just the farm or the ranch in general is Fiona and Sadie. Oh, I was talking about this morning what happened in the pasture. Go ahead. So. Oh, you mean with the calves? Yes. That's what I'm saying. Like you, like that to me, what you noticed it and called it out what was happening. So explain it. Well, you know that we have. Uh, so we have lots of cross fencing here. We made sure that when, when we designed Longhorn Lusters, we knew that we needed cross fencing. What that means is you have a large pasture, but then you have smaller sections inside that pasture. And so we did a lot of cross fencing uh, to accommodate the goats, the ostriches or whatever. In this case, now we have a couple of calves who also need to be inside the smaller pasture uh, for their safety. But we have doggy doors so that the goats can come out, the calves can come out. Uh, the calves had found themselves, though, in the goat pasture. And I don't know which calf brought them in there, but at some point through their exploring, they found themselves in the wrong pasture. And so it was this morning, Jamie and I were having our coffee, and we noticed the calves were in the wrong pasture. It's not a big deal. It doesn't really matter. It's not one. like they're stuck. It's no. just they're, they're not as savvy as like finding. They couldn't find the doggy door they walked into. They came through a doggy door and they didn't know how they come in there. So Sadie, uh, who can go into all three of the smaller pastures, she knows her way into all of them. She can go in and out. She actually goes inside with them. And I don't know how she communicated to follow me and I'll show you the way back to your pasture. And so she walks in, they all kind of look at each other a little bit. They, they do. They just look at each other. Sadie begins to walk out and both of the calves follow her. She goes through the doggy door. The calves follow her. She begins to walk along the fence line. She turns up into their pasture and all of a sudden you can see light bulbs go off. They get in Ruby, the pasture and Ruby, run. Ruby and Danny, little light bulb. Oh, that's where we belong. And they took off running and moving so and kicking. Because and we saw them in the pasture and we're like, eh, they'll figure it out later or they won't. And it's not a big deal because everything that they need is in every pasture. But they weren't with their herd or their normal space for the day. They'd already had their bottles in that pasture, like everything. And for Sadie to notice like, hey, they probably don't want to hang out there all day somehow. And to go lead them silently. Yeah. And to and then to come out after she got them to the right place, she came back out with us to have coffee. And it was yeah. just like, it was just one of those moments where you're like, if we didn't see that, we would never have believed they, that sir, it happened. They, they all have a purpose. And... For Sadie and Fiona especially. Now, I know Christmas, that's her purpose is getting Jamie to bed on time or whatever. Those are cute things. But the things that we've seen Sadie and Fiona do as far as their nighttime routine and the way that they position themselves to protect and to guard these babies is just an amazing thing to watch. And if you've never had a chance to see a dog fulfilling its purpose, I know lots of dogs are bred to perform different purposes. I think that one I've, I've never had, but I've seen on the internet are those dogs that help with the sheep. And these dogs will actually jump onto the back of the sheep and run along the tops of the sheep to get down and to maneuver these sheep into different locations. And these sheep ranchers just kind of like watch the dogs do their purpose. And these dogs feel so content and so fulfilled to serve their purpose. Mm -hmm. And I'm watching uh, Sadie and Fiona do the exact same thing. Now, they're not fulfilling that kind of a purpose as far as hurting everybody around, but they are serving their own purpose. And they are just so driven every day to be the best at what they have to do. And we've never trained them for that. It's just something in their genetic code that they've been bred to do. I don't. Get it. Well, like also when Danny was little and she wouldn't eat from a bottle, like it was like the most yes. 
endless battle to get an animal to stay alive, to want to eat. And Sadie would put her position herself to trigger those natural mom things that Danny was needing. And then Danny would eat. And then it became that Sadie would position herself to protect me from Ruby's wrath. We'll just call it. But like Sadie is this intuitive dog who we were just talking about this today. We don't know her past. We yeah. know nothing about her past, but for her, her time with us has been invaluable. And, yeah. and we just love her relentlessly and think that she is just this brilliant dog, brilliant dog. Yeah, we were, I mean, all of our dogs are special and they hold a really unique place in our heart. Uh, we have had to move some dogs along for different reasons. Some, we just, they didn't really serve a purpose for us uh, or they had bad habits and well, or they weren't going to be safe here. So like Billy they, Bob wasn't yeah. going to be, a, Billy Bob was not a farm yeah, dog. No, some dogs are not. And farm dogs have to be, I'm sorry, don't be mad again, but some dogs are not smart enough to be farm dogs. Like, like Trixie, she keeps getting herself into trouble because she's not smart enough to be a farm dog. But uh, farm dogs have to be extra keen and extra vigilant. And there's so many things moving around. I think it's like dogs who live on the street. They have to know, hey, there's a lot of things happening. This is a, you know, code red all the time because of all that's going on around them. And farm dogs have to pretty much live on in code red, if that makes any sense to you all. But um, I think that it's amazing the dogs that we've rescued and their temperament. Hold on. Before I forget, I, I'm so sorry. Don't forget that. Don't you? For, you're not going to forget. She forgets nothing. Trust me. Daniel and Luann, Lu Lu Luann, Luann. Lulu, Daniel and Lulu, my brother, and Leanne, they go to North Carolina this weekend. They did. Yeah. Because Daniel got to do a cooking show. He did a cooking show. And do you know who showed up at his cooking show? The same people that, that came to us from North Carolina to get those two dogs. Buddy and Brutus's parents. Buddy and Brutus's parents went to their cooking show in North Carolina. And where they had to cook with the... Um, what do they call that stuff? The cast, iron. the cast iron. It was a really neat thing. And Daniel got to meet those folks who came all the way from North Carolina to get Buddy and Brutus. They're such great folks. They are. I'll let you keep going now. Keep and going. Anyway, I was I was just going to say, like, for me, learning that it, we never set out to rescue dogs. It started with Christmas, and we've spent most of this year rescuing dogs and, re, you know, rehoming and realigning and doing things like that. Each one that came to us had something different that they were starved from. Does that make sense? Yeah, starved. Absolutely. And I don't. And I don't. Not mean not food. from just food. Even though some come, from, they were starving. Yes, but but there was something else that they were needing, and to see that like come out and fulfill their purpose, as you were talking about, in the differences in all of them, has been one of the greatest experiences of my entire life of watching that. And learning from that because I had no idea. I had no, I, I mean, I knew our dogs, like we, had, I had beagles, <clears throat> you had boxers and I knew each of them had individual things, but I never realized all of these different breeds and how I thought that they were mostly just starved for food would actually be starving for attention, for, for safety, for, the the desire to protect like all of these things in each of them that have really shown in their individual personalities and being able to to really see that unfold in our little seven layer pack here yeah <laughs> let's uh, let's name all this would be a fun challenge and i shouldn't even challenge you on this one because it's going to be so hard but let's name all of our dogs that we've rescued in order going in reverse i'll go first so bond was the most recent let's say a little bit about him bond was the most recent he was trapped we actually had to trap him at i'm a survivor he was coming around messing with the animals so we trapped him realized he was probably a good dog um we well, did he, was all sweet. Of the... he gave his hand to me within the yes. first time I met him. Yes. And I just was like, oh, just I know. You yeah, want. Jamie like... went all crazy for Bond. Uh, he ended up going with my nephew, Ben, 
to live in a place called Tarkington, which is not very far from here, uh, for a for a for a, a classmate of Ben's who had lost a dog. What kind of dog was that again? I think he's an Akita. An Akita or a mix, probably a Akita Husky mix that they had lost one that looked not lost, but I mean like <coughs> lost who looked just like him. And so Bond is doing great. And a side note, Bond never had kennel cough. And if he did, he must have passed it. I was or say, got I, think, over I it. think that Bond was a car like you can the be a carrier. carrier. Yeah. Or he had it and he was getting over it when we rescued him. Yeah. Because I've called uh, the owners and Bond has no, has not had a cough. I was actually going to back up to one more because I'm I'm going to call the last little girl Carrie as our most Oh recent. my gosh, Carrie, Carrie, not Gary. Gary. Not Gary, Carrie. Carrie. Yeah, so little, that really wasn't a, little, a rescue, but we did, I guess, save her we for did. a couple I, of days. I think that that we helped her in her little journey there. So, so the Rottweiler that the, showed up. Someone says, prom. "Yes, the prom dog." <laughs> yeah. So she's the most recent one that I'm gonna call. Of did of you ever make her. an entire story about her and I say did. that she lived down the road? I did. So uh, I'm just gonna say this: I was mad at Jamie. He was so mad at me. So mad. Listen, I loved her. I loved that little girl, Carrie. I think your exact words were, you just wanted to take away something I was snuggling with. Yes. And here's why I was mad. Because on the very first night, listen, we don't let dogs in our bed. We don't let dogs in our bed. Or, or I'll say, we usually never let dogs in our bed. Yes or no? And then, the but none of them try to jump up there either. Keep in mind that they, they don't, they have their own spaces. No, they have their own spaces. They all have their own doggy beds. They have their own little nooks and crannies where they like, like to sleep. And on the very first night, which was prom night, uh, if I don't go to bed and this darn dog would not leave. And so as we're sitting there talking, buddy, Stephanie, me and Jamie, this dog kept hanging around and it was actually showing a lot of signs of being a really great dog. Now it had a collar on. And so we knew it belonged to somebody, but she smelled good. She, we, I let her in the house. I let her in the house. What can I say? I felt worried about her uh, running off again. So I let her in the house. And if that dog did not follow me to the bedroom. And at some point, once I went to bed, if she didn't come and jump up in that bed with us and slept right there at our feet, and Jamie wasn't mad because she was probably had a little bit too much to drink. So she slept right through it. But I'm like, that dog's with, she's sleeping with us. I don't even know this dog. I hadn't, but she's in the bed with us and I let her stay. And then uh, the next night she came to the bed again. And that's when she got a little bit Time out. jealous. No, 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 no. That's, no. don't make me do the red, don't, red rum. Red I did not get it was red rum. I got up to pee and she took my spot. Yes. It and was, that and made her upset. Who would get upset? Make, it didn't make me upset. Who would get upset about something? So here I am snuggling and y'all know I have shoulder issues along with pain issues. I have a lot of issues. And so I found myself nice and comfy with Carrie. <laughs> I was so comfy with Carrie and Carrie was just, I mean, she and I are like face to face and I don't normally sleep that way. I don't normally do the whole face to face sleeping kind of thing. And Carrie was like right up at my face and she just loves me so much. And she's like watching me sleep. And they're on my <laughs> side of the bed. So I'm like, okay, well I can go to the other side. And then Lester's going to wake me up the second he rolls over and wants that side back. I could go to the couch except for Mabel had the couch no. with another dog. And I wasn't mad. I still was no, just like, was okay. I was red rum, red rum. I said, do you think y'all could scoot over? So I held her, a Carrie. I held Carrie and I pulled her over to me. And by the next day, Jamie is on Facebook posting pictures of this dog saying, who lost a dog? Time out. Who lost this animal? We Because I looked up the app and it, it was Sunday. And you couldn't, you couldn't call the app on her little tracker collar. The company was closed until Monday. So I was also making a post of saying, we found this dog. It has to be somebody. She was too clean. She was too well fed, too clean, too sweet. There anyway, were just too many things. I loved her. I loved that dog. I only knew her for two days, but boy, it was a magical two days. It was magical. And, um, 
we have not had a dog in our bed since. Okay. <laughs> I will just say it that way. Her, We've, <laughs> her family had their own. Post we have not of had her. a dog in our bed since then, but not before nor ever after will there ever be another Carrie. However, when I met that lady down by the road, uh, after Jamie didn't make contact and demanded she come get her dog, I now, did not. Do not let this dog here another night. You are so <laughs> full of I don't it. know the conversation. All I know is that, that lady one minute, messaged me like 27 times when she realized that we had her dog because she was so excited. All I know is one minute I'm sitting here face to face right into the soul of this dog. Next minute she's being snatched out from under me and I have to take this dog to the end of the driveway because she couldn't come up here and get her. No, I had to take the dog to her. And as I handed the dog over, uh, I says, are you sure that this is the same dog? Are you apt? Oh, oh, she has all these pictures in her phone. It's her and the dog and her baby and the dog and her baby. With and the, the dog same and her collar baby. on. Yeah, it was the same collar. But I'm like, is Which there is the post I saw. With the baby and the dog and when it went missing and, and that I it was says, a few miles down the road. is there any way that you'd want to part ways with this dog? <laughs> and I also said, if you ever in the future find out that it's not working out for some reason, well, she's one of those people that just love that breed of dog. What kind of dog was that? A Rottweiler. She just loves the, they call them Rotties. Mm -hmm. She just loves her Rotties and she loves her Rotties. But man, I tell you what, I love that dog and I've... Guys, I love Maggie and I love Trixie. And don't start trying to say I don't love them all. But there was something special about those moments. And I think every one of y'all can look back to a time in your life when you had a moment. There was a moment. He was so Might have been me. on the dance floor. It might have been sitting across a table in a dimly lit restaurant. I don't know. But my moment happened right there in my bedroom about a week ago with me and this dog this far apart. And she looked at me and I looked at her and there was a magical moment. What's wrong with you? And it was it was just red rum. Oh, he was she was just red rum. He was so mad at me. And I, was I like loved her. You don't know about the love that I felt for her. And I know we did the right thing. I know Jamie did the right thing. <laughs> All I said to you was. If someone found my sookie I know, and loved her I that know. way, this, this is what she said. I would be devastated because I looked for her for a year. For an entire year, I went looking and made signs and posted and hoofed it through the woods and across the river and literally every single beagle post and group that I was on, I spent all of my time trying to find her. So... So, I just said that someone loved this dog enough to get it a tracker collar to keep her clean, to keep to get her spayed, to all the house things. broken, all the things. And and I didn't even tell you this, but the night that I walked her or we I put her on the side by side and drove her to down to the road, you know, I put a horse leash, a uh, horse lead on her collar, and she walked like on a leash, like she knew what she was doing. I got on the side by side. She got right up beside me, beside me, the way that my dad's dog does with him, Heidi. And I'm like, damn. <laughs> Listen, it was hard. it was so hard. As I'm thinking about it now, I'm getting emotional because I loved her. I okay, laugh or cry, whatever you want to do, but I loved her. And I still love her. And I'll never forget that moment. I'm looking at you through the computer. And I'll never forget that moment with her. Sorry. Okay. And yes, do I love Stella? Absolutely. Do I love Millie and Fiona and Christmas and Trixie? And do I miss Maggie every day? But there was something special, equally special about Carrie. Maybe it's because you were Gary. Maybe because I was Gary. I don't know why. <laughs> but I love her, okay? And there's a special moment. And I hope that you all have had a moment that you can think back to. Maybe with a dog or maybe someone else. I don't care. But you know the moment that I'm talking about, y'all. And I had that. Now I don't. <laughs> I'm going to make me a drink. <laughs> Keep going. Keep on going. I'll be right here. You know, the the new girls and the, the one night stands are always 
new and shiny and and hold all of the things until you you know you live with them and all of their real comes out and then you realize that all that all that shiny and new is just was it like that it wasn't like that she was different she was different <sighs> she was different <laughs> i will admit i loved her too and she was super sweet and she fell in line with the rest of our dogs and and had she stayed it would have been fine but i just put myself in the sookie situation which is exactly what i said when i told you i found her owner and i if someone if sookie was in somebody else's bed <laughs> I just hope that they loved her beyond that new shiny moment is all. Well, I'll say this. If they ever stop loving her, then there's a man here who's ready to swoop her right back up into his bed. Don't worry. We should probably get us a larger bed. You we can are, get your own. Have you, have you ever heard of a California king? We have a king size bed. A California king is skinnier and longer. Oh, Oh, no, no. We need something wider. Get it? California's. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah. I did not realize that. I thought a California king was like even bigger than a king. Just longer. Like king extra large. Just, just, just longer. longer. We don't need longer. We fit fine on our king, but we need more space, especially if Carrie comes back. So <laughs> anyone that's just joining us live who has no idea what we're talking about is thinking that we're like some serious pervs over here. Anywho, we, can I read this letter? We're, we, you're going to put me in your pocket on that one? No, go ahead. I want to read this letter though, because it comes attention, Annie, the alpaca. I think the timeliness of this letter is perfect. I'll let you keep talking if you want to. This okay. comes from Tennessee. Can I read it? Go ahead. Now, you know, it's always hard to read a letter because you don't really know exactly if the letter is one that's meant to be read. But if it comes to Annie, I think now is safe enough to read because Annie has just given birth. So here we go. Okay, so first thing that I notice is that the, or the, the, the letter is in reverse order. It, the very big opening end of it is the last page. So I'm going to just try to work it around. Here we go. Oh, boy. It's going to be hard for me to read. Okay. Y'all have to give me a moment here. Do you want to read it? Hey, Annie. Hey, Annie the Alpaca. My name is Sherry. I've seen one of your videos and how your daddy reads your letters to you. I thought it was cute. I thought maybe you would care to hear my story. Nobody cares to hear them, it seems. Once I can't read that. You have to read it. So this might be the kind of story that we should not read. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. So, okay. So the, no offense, and, and it might be perfectly fine. But a lot of times people will say, you're okay, this is okay to read online. But this lady here starts off with the words, no one cares to hear my story, so maybe you'd like to hear it. And so that might be one that might be, obviously for you and me, right. not really for Annie but a story nonetheless. So I didn't mean to... I'll read. How about I read it and get the gist of it just in case? Okay. And then you keep talking. Okay. Well, there's really not a lot for me to say because I've already put my foot in my mouth so many times. Yesterday, I made a video about Waylon. It was a short video. And the gist of my video was about the reasonings behind why we don't... We don't like to put our hands on our bulls. And I equated that to the same thing as a man putting hands on a teenager, son or daughter, but mostly sons, because I feel, this is my opinion, I feel like whenever a young man gets to a certain age, it becomes awkward to have another man's hands on him. And I did not want to take a herd bull, a future herd bull, and force hands on him. And so instead, I show my love in other ways. Those other ways being things that are not hands-on, but are so very important with clean, fresh water and the right nutrition and the mineral blocks and the vet care. And you can just go on and on of all the things that you do for your animals to show your love. 
And people did not want to hear that. People don't want to hear that. And so that was the first thing that got me into some hot water with people. And so today I try to not defend myself necessarily, but maybe put it into different words. I just chose some different words. Now, all of this was on my own little branch of Longhorn Lester. It was not the mothership. It was not the mothership. It was the little bitty, uh, the mini spaceships that come out of the mothership known as Longhorn Lesters. And uh, that's kind of where I found a lot of dissatisfaction with my way of thinking. Now, here's what I respect. Here, this is what I love. No one was mad, but there were tons of people who respectfully disagreed. Man, and you don't know how I enjoy conversations like that. Do you know anybody who looks for debate, who enjoys debate? Yeah. So, so it's not an argument, y'all. If you can do it respectfully, it's not an argument. We live in a world that's hard for some people to know that, Everyone doesn't agree with them. And some folks can't handle that. But I actually remember the old school where it's actually fun to debate. And I get the biggest kick. Jamie gets mad at me because I will spend so much time reading the comments. And I know I can't reply to every one of them. I can't reply to every one of them. But to me, when I start reading comments, to me, that kind of like generates a video idea. And so I took the comments from one video and it generated enough ideas for me to build a longer video that sort of re-emphasized or re-explained or put into a different perspective my point of view on the touching of the young men, the male bulls. What's wrong? You weren't hearing the first part of my story. You were reading. I did, but you the way you 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 word that is probably no, no, it, it actually it it is makes a whole lot of sense though. And so I know. So a young bull. No, 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 no. That's not what you said. I said young man. Yeah. Yes, because the, the here's the here's the analogy. A bull, or let's say any male species, a Ringo, let's talk about Ringo, the old Ringo. At a certain point when they're little, like Finn, they they love the attention. Just like any young little guy loves to play wrestling with daddy or tickling with daddy or mommy. But at a certain point in life, Xander at a certain point was no longer into the lovey, dovey, huggy, cuddly, tickle me phase. He became a young man and a young man begins to make this natural maturation process where they start accepting your love, but in a different way. And they start showing their love in a different way. They do not want your hands all over them. So that's why I said I don't like to put my hands on my bulls. Once they get to a certain age, I want to respect them as young future leaders of a herd and not coddle them with my hands and force myself to touch on them the same way we would not want to touch on young men. That's what I meant by that. That's what I meant. I hope it, I hope you understand what I meant. And so not everyone agreed with me on that. And and that's fine. But Jamie can sometimes not understand how I can get engrossed in conversations. And so that was the first of a couple of videos where I kind of like upset some people. And then by me posting that one today, I had to go by and delete a whole bunch of people that were very upset of me with that video of Ernie doing that with with uh, with Imogene. It was Imogene. Well, it's Guys. Kind of farm life. Well, it is farm, but it's all farm life. It's all farm life. Me not touching my bull is my form of management. It's like my form of keep how you keep your home, right? That's my style. I would not go into your home and tell you how to discipline your children. That's not my place. But I raise my kids or my farm animals under this type of guidelines or under this type of thinking. Not everyone feels the same way about all of those things. So by me showing you that little snippet of Ernie with, with Imogene was very offensive to a lot of people. And so I found myself having to... Farm life is offensive to a lot of people. Farm life is. I love the way you said that. Farm life is absolutely offensive 
to a lot of people. Listen, some people won't be able to handle the smell. If you rem- do, you remember that time that the 4-H people came out? Oh yeah, and, and they were like appalled gagging at the smell. The mother was gagging, yes. and her kids were gagging. I'm like, you asked to come here. I didn't. I didn't invite you over. Right. You asked to come here. It's a farm. There are farm smells, and yeah. some of them are not pleasant. And you, you can roll with it. Or you can't. You don't smell it from a mile away, but sometimes when you walk into a confined space and it's 100 degrees outside, sometimes you're going to smell it. Yeah. And I, I think of it as like a Disney movie, a Walt Disney movie. You can see animals on a Walt Disney movie, and they're never going to be in compromising positions the way we saw Ernie with Imogene, our donkey. Yeah, and I'll pack in a donkey in that position would you'll never catch that on a Walt Disney movie even though that guy was pretty perverse from what I understand that guy was pretty perverse listen I have a video of Ernie and a goat last year yeah so and you know it it, <laughs> it happens you capture it when nobody's hurt you you break it up and move along and find a new solution and I just laugh I just laugh about it I just laugh but it's not for everybody. And so, hey, it is what it is. So, no, I was just saying that two days in a row. Was the letter readable or not really? No. Okay. So, no offense to anybody. Sorry to get you excited. When I saw it was to Annie, I thought, this is all about Annie anyway. Let's just read it. But um, uh, for the lady who sent it, I promise you, I will take my time to read that a little bit later. And uh, thank you for entrusting us with your story. That's powerful when people want to tell you their story. I love that more than anything. Um, so that is one way that we're blessed in the amount of emails, messages, WhatsApp messages. Um, Can I tell you, somebody says I love farm smells. I have a favorite farm smell. Do you have a favorite farm smell? You don't smell very much. I don't smell very good anymore. Uh, Hurricane Harvey took my smell, my sense of smell. Hurricane Harvey took my sense of smell. Believe it or not, that's true. It wasn't COVID that got me. It was Hurricane Harvey flooding got me. But uh, my favorite farm smell, though. Hey, no horses. The, the horse, smell of horses. The smell of horses is unlike any other. Mm. And now that all of our, all three of them are in the same place, and we're utilizing the stalls every day, and and I'm working with them, I I think that saddle how powerful. That I that think is. that saddle soap or saddle leather. Is is a, is a great smell, yeah. But I also like fresh cut hay smell. Fresh I, cut I, hay, if you can handle it. If you're not allergic to fresh cut hay, man, there's a really wonderful smell with fresh cut hay. Well, for me, it is the scent of the horses, and and I'm, I, I, it's it's like they're perspiration. It's their smell. Yeah. And to me, all horses smell that way. And being around it, like the other day, this is such a weird thing for me to admit. It was chilly, so I had a jacket on to start with and then had to toss it into the truck. And I didn't wash it. I just brought it home and threw it in my office. And then when I put it on to have coffee this morning, I went like this to itch my nose and it smelled like horses. And it was like this euphoric. I love it. Did you have a magical moment? (laughs) Not really. Maybe, Uh, but it's okay. No, I do. I love that smell. And and I think that there are there are scents on the farm that will bring you back if you've ever experienced things like that. And oh, that does happen, yeah. You know, I think that that every once in a while, like it'll it'll capture you and be like, Oh, that just brings back a moment type of thing. So horses are it for me. Well, that's beautiful. Jamie, we have exceeded our hour. Oh my gosh, we have been talking. It has a long been a time. really fast. It went by so fast. Well, excited for Oki to be a part of our family and for your help in naming him. And I am sure that we're going to call him all kinds of things and, and, you know, come up with fun little nicknames and things like that. But his name is officially Oki. Oki. And he's doing really well. And mom is doing really well. And we had a really good good weekend a very busy full weekend at both properties and um lester even took me for a little bit of a date dinner today which was nice so it was a good day let's not talk about that because I, i'll make a video out of it Ooh, okay can no, I, I hope no one's laughing this one. can i end it with this one over here again hold on one second oh 
thank you all for loving us oh, and being yeah. a part of our life and our live and for allowing us into your homes and phones and giving us the greatest gift of all, which is your time. Yes. We're very blessed. Thank you guys. And we'll catch you guys on the next video. Tell me if y'all have not seen a cuter baby in your entire life. All right, we got the baby all cleaned up. We help mom along a little bit. And uh, it is a male. Shh, hush it up. Hush it. Y'all need to hush it up. Shut all of the little pie holes. We don't want to scare mama. Annie needs some time to recoup after all of that ordeal. But uh, you don't want to intervene if you don't have to. And so Annie's allowing all of us to come around and be a part of the moment as long as we don't get too close. These geese are not helping anything though.